Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ambassador Ty, welcome. And I would uh, echo what my colleague, Senator Grassley, said about digital trade. And that's something I've worked with the chairman on a lot. And it seems like we have abdicated our role as a leader when it comes to digital trade and uh, very quickly allowing China to step into the gap. But I want to focus specifically on ag trade. Um, that's been referenced already this morning as well. And you had indicated that uh, one of the reasons we have a, a trade deficit in agriculture is because of the strong dollar. And I don't deny that there are macroeconomic effects that, that impact trade. But USDA also acknowledged that one of the reasons we're running trade deficits is because of market access. And I can't honestly see anything the administration is doing on market access. Uh, I talk to agricultural organizations all the time. And by the way, um, we do have, we're running the largest trade deficit this year ever. 17 billion this year, they're saying could be 30 billion this coming year. And net farm income was down $30 billion last year, will be down, they say, $39 billion this year. So thanks to inflation, input costs are going up, Commodity prices are going down. One of the things that affects commodity prices is demand. And the way you create demand is to open markets. And I can't tell that the administration is doing anything on that. Now, you say we've got a different approach to trade. And I understand that approach is grounded in things other than market access. But market access is what our farmers and ranchers are looking for to open up the markets so they can sell their products and get the trade deficit back to trade surplus and get this net farm income back in the, in the positive column. I, I just, it's, it defies explanation. And you talk about working with our allies. We have some low-hanging fruit. Uh, UK, EU, I'm on a bill that uh, would create a free trade agreement with United Kingdom. They're one of our longest and closest allies. And there isn't a single free trade agreement that this administration has entered into. So I want to know what specific actions the Biden administration plans to take to increase U.S. agricultural exports in 2024. Senator Thune, there is so much that we have already done, as I noted earlier, $21 billion in market access over the last three years. That's, for example, the safeguard agreement uh, that we renewed with Japan that has allowed for high quality U.S. beef from your state to uh, increase access to a growing Japanese market. That includes um, the, uh, the, the 12 uh, tariff categories uh, with India, a growing market, growing opportunity for U.S. exporters. So I think um, we, we, have to, we, we have to acknowledge that. Market access can come more quickly, more effectively, more in more agile ways if we are looking for those opportunities to score what we like to call singles and doubles, to rack up the score that way, as opposed to tying up opportunities over the course of many, many years in FTA negotiations that sometimes don't ever come into being. Um, on the how about, how about deficit, the easy FTAs? How about the UK? I think there are no easy FTAs. I don't know if you followed, but uh, the UK and Canada have been negotiating an FTA that they stopped negotiating because the UK won't talk ag, uh, ag market access. And in fact, in the, in, the, in the last years of the Trump administration, um, in those negotiations, uh, the UK had refused to put ag market access on the table. Ag market access is also something that has traditionally really uh, frustrated our efforts at large FTA-like exercises with the European Union. So we are, we are absolutely committed. And Senator Thune, I want to let you know, um, I think our farmers uh, are the savviest business people that I talk to and work with in trade. They know their businesses. They know trade. With respect to the deficit, we're concerned about the deficit, absolutely. And I, I think your concern is well placed. I just wish that our, um, our, our ag champions were as concerned about the industrial trade deficit as they are with ag trade, because it can absolutely indicate um, a need for concern. Secretary Vilsack and I know, uh, along with our farmers, that we need to be able to diversify uh, our export opportunities, because we are at a lot of risk. We are working very, very hard to do that. But in, in addition to a strong US dollar, one of the other challenges we have is a really, really strong economy, a strong consumer economy here in the United States that is actually uh, fueling our economic recovery. Take, for example, China. 
where uh, they are uh, uh, in an economic downturn that they don't have the domestic demand to be able to uh, help them recover, which is why they're relying on an export-led recovery uh, program that's going to cause serious, serious problems for all the rest of us unless we do something. So I want to start um, uh, on first principles, uh, reinforce um, how much we care about our ag producers. Uh, we want to make sure that they continue to win, and uh, we are working hard every single day to score wins for them. Well, my time has expired, Mr. Chairman, but I would just say I, I think that ag always ends up being at the end of the line. And, 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 and honestly, I mean, and can convince me, and so I can convince some of the agriculture organizations. I just met with all of them in my state last Friday. This is an issue. I mean, they don't think the administration gets it that we've got to be opening up more markets, that the issue is market access. It's tariff and non-tariff barriers. You focus on all these peripheral issues, none of which are at the core of why we can't get access to some of these markets around the world. And those are tariff and non-tariff barriers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.